After graduating from high school, I went to one year of college, and then I decided I was smart enough, so I quit, which was one of my major mistakes. Among many major mistakes I made in those early days. But I was ambitious and willing to work hard, and figured I wouldn't have any trouble getting a job, which turned out to be accurate. So with a head full of dreams and ambitions, I started my first job. About three years later, I got married, made lots of promises, worked hard, and a couple of years later started a family. And at age 25, I started taking a new look at my life. My weekly paycheck amounted to the grand total of $57. I was far behind on my promises, behind on my bills, and discouraged. I was far from making the progress I thought I should have made. I was willing to work hard. That was not my problem. But it was clear that it was going to take more than hard work. And I didn't want to wind up at age 60 broke, needing assistance, like so many people I saw around me, not in the richest country in the world. So what do you do to change the direction of your life? I thought, well, I should go back to school. One year of college doesn't look that good on an application. But now with my family starting, going back to school seemed like a tough decision. I didn't have any money to start my own business. Money was one of my problems. I always had far too much month left over at the end of the money, if you've ever been in that position. I remember one time losing $10 and I was physically ill for two days over a $10 bill. Some of my friends tried to be cheerful. They said, look, maybe some poor person who needed it found it. But that was not really helpful. I must admit at that time in my life, benevolence had not yet seized me. I was the person who needed to find ten dollars, not lose ten. So that's where I was at that time in my life, behind on my dreams, and constantly wondering what I could possibly do to change my life for the better. What does it take to really change a person's lifestyle? Not very much. An extra thousand a month, I'm telling you, will drastically change most American families' lifestyle. And that's why part-time is so valuable, because it very quickly changes a person's lifestyle. And here's what the change in lifestyle does. It's a great recruiting tool. One of the greatest recruiting attractions is the money you make part-time. Somebody said, you've been on three vacations this year? He says, yes, I got this little part-time thing going. He says, what's that? You bought two new cars, one for you and one for her. How did you do that? He said, I got this little part-time thing going. You, your kids have got all these new clothes? Yes. All this stuff is happening? What is it? An extra thousand a month. See, a thousand a month full-time, nobody wants to hear your story. A thousand a month part-time to start to change your lifestyle, everybody wants to hear your story. So the key is part-time. The magic and the attraction of part-time gives you a classic invitation for somebody to listen to what you're doing that's changing your life. And it's not just necessarily the money that changes your life. It's what you do with the money. It's the change of lifestyle. So part-time helps to change lifestyle, which gives you a classic invitation to look at what you're doing. That's how I started in network marketing. Age 20. Here's the next one. Philosophy that helped change my life. It's not what happens that determines your life future. It's not what happens that determines your life future. It's what you do about what happens. All of us are in like a little sailboat. And it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your destination. It's the set of the sail. So jot this phrase down. It's one of the best to understand. Kids need to understand it. The same wind blows on us all. The same wind blows on us all. The wind of disaster, the wind of opportunity, the wind of change. The wind when it's upside down, the wind when it's favorable and unfavorable. The same wind blows on us all. The economic wind, the social wind, the political wind. The same wind blows on everybody. The difference in where you arrive in one year, three years, five years, the difference in arrival is not the blowing of the wind, but the set of the sail. And that's what learning is all about, to set a better sail this year than last year. To set a better sail. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. You say, well, the Democrats must have finally gotten power. No. 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 It was not a political change. Here's what changed the second six years of my economic life. 
It was my philosophy that changed. The set of the sail of better thinking, correcting the errors of the past and picking up new disciplines for the future. That's all I had to do at the end of the first six. Correct the errors of the past and then pick up some new disciplines for the future. And my total life changed. The second six years was totally different than the first six of my working life. And guess who can do that? Anybody. Now, you can keep on the same path for the next couple of years as you have the past two. But if you wish to, if you wish to, and maybe everything's okay for you and you don't need to, but if you need to make some changes, I'm telling you, you can start doing it today so that the next two years will be drastically different than the last two. And anybody who wishes to do that can. And you can do it between ages 40 and 43. You can do it between ages 13 and 50. You can do it between ages 60 and 62. Any two years, any five years that you wish to drastically change from the previous five, you can do it. If you wish to. Now, this is not, this is, this isn't written. This is not a law. Here's what it's called. Opportunity. But if you don't know, you can change. If you don't know, you can drastically change your income, change your future, change your health, change your marriage, change everything. If you don't know that, some people then go year after year after year after year not making much change simply because they, they didn't get to the class. They never read the book. They never went to the seminar. They never made the discovery. They didn't seek for the knowledge of how could I make my life better. And if you just rock along, I'm telling you it's okay. Anybody can live any way they choose. But I'm here to tell all of you that if you wish to, it's possible to make the next three years totally different than the last three. And all you have to do is just a few things. I don't believe in faking it till you make it. You know what entrepreneurism is, right? It's the greatest self-discovery process in the history of mankind. Isn't it? You learn more about yourself, what you don't know, your resiliency, how tough you are, what your weaknesses are by being an entrepreneur. It's probably the greatest self-discovery program in the history of the world. It's also this. It's the greatest self-improvement program with the highest compensation package possibly attached to it, too. That's what entre entrepreneurism is, a self-improvement program with massive compensation package attached to it. And that's why too many of you are too focused on growing your company and not focused enough on growing you. Because your company will never, ever exceed your identity or your vision for it. You got to grow you because what will happen when it starts to grow, you'll start making unconscious mistakes to shrink it, making bad calls, getting weak, getting lazy, making mistakes. You're all nodding because you've all done it because at some point your business got ahead of you. It will never exceed your identity and your vision because if the company catches your vision, if the company catches your identity, you're dying. You can choose right now to think about the things you're grateful for, the breeze, a smile from somebody kind, a stranger who holds open a door for you, anything. But it's a choice. And as Einstein said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. That's when it's time to hit back. Many people get hit by life, but they never hit back. The sun still shines. The world still spins. Life continues. You're here for one reason, yourself. And as Ralph Marsden said, welcome those big, sticky, complicated problems. In them are your most powerful opportunities. And that's it. The big problems, the ones that matter, the things that will give you purpose and meaning in your life, they're going to be hard. But if you can look at the hard things and show up and push every day and keep striving and when you fall down pick yourself back up and focus only on one thing not whether or not you're going to win but whether or not it mattered that you played this is your time to prove yourself that life can be so much more that it's sacred and something so sacred sometimes takes sacrifices sacrifices you will not regret this time next year we're all worth far more than anyone can imagine. Our power honestly is endless, and our potential has the power to make something real out of the life you live. I'm learning now, I think, to try to go with the flow, to enjoy things, uh, not to worry so much. If you always do good work from your standards, whether you're in a project that fails or succeeds, you can live with that. So whether you have talent, whether you don't, the only thing that matters is will you persevere? Will you stick with it long enough to get great? Um, if you think that you're going to go and accomplish something really special and be the best in anything in the world, 
and you think you can do it without working, you make a big mistake. Because no matter what I did, if it was in bodybuilding or in acting or if it was in the arena, uh, it always took a lot, a lot of work. And you got to put out and you got to, you know, something to make a lot of sacrifices and all this. If you're not willing to work hard, forget about it. One day I realized that when you counsel people, you work on their weaknesses. And when you equip people, you work on their strengths. And the moment I went from working on weaknesses to working on strengths, I became, I, I was, I was a rock star with, mm. with strengths. Because yeah. you show me your strength and I'm going to give you a game plan and let's get going because I'm a natural equipper, not a natural counselor. Yes. Nothing wrong with counseling, it's just not my gift. You with me? And, 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 and what did they teach me in college? They taught me how to administrate. Yeah. So I'm in my, you know, I've got my little country church. I'm doing administration. Well, there's no return there. I mean, my gosh. And then one day I'm waking up and I'm saying, wait a minute, this isn't working. I got to go get me some volunteers to do this administration so I can get back. And so it's trial and error. Mm. And, and, and sometimes I think we go to people like, I mean, Ed, if I'm trying to find out my strengths and you and I know each other really well, I may come to you and say, okay, well, talk to him. You know, what do I do? Well, yes. You know, sometimes we don't understand our own strengths and it takes somebody that really is a good friend that knows us well that can say, well, I think you're really good in this area. Yes. But you got to find them. Yes. And, and, and the good news is everybody has gifts.